So the last trend that we need to talk about in the periodic trends is ionic radius. And hopefully you guys recognize that the ionic radius is just the radius of an ion. Remember that an ion is an atom that has gained or lost electrons. So you need to think about the trend. It's different than the atomic radius, electronegativity, and ionization energy trends. Those are pretty straightforward. They go in one direction. Ionic radius is a little bit different because we have to look at two different relationships. So one of them is the relationship between the atom and the ion. So an atom and ion of an element would have the same number of protons but different numbers of electrons. And then we also have to think about atoms and ions that have the same number of electrons. So they may have different numbers of protons. So we're going to look at those. When we have atoms and ions that have the same number of electrons, we call that an isoelectronic series. Iso meaning same. You might remember that from biology. Isotonic. Uh, so let's look at that. Okay, so looking at these, first of all, Think about what the gray and what the pink and the blue represent. Pause if you need to. So if you look at, let's say, lithium in group 1A, lithium, the, on the right side of that where the gray side is, it's just lithium. And on the left, it's lithium with a positive charge, meaning that it has lost an electron because it's positive. So if you look, the lithium with the positive charge, the pink, compared to the lithium atom, which is gray, that positive ion is smaller than the atom. And that's true if you look at all the positive ions in the picture. So you can see that positive ions tend to be smaller than their atoms. And if you think about that, um, lithium is in row uh, period two it loses an electron and it actually loses a shell because that electron is that 2s1 electron and so when it loses one electron it loses that whole two uh, shell and so that means that the electrons that are left with lithium are close to the nucleus and so it's going to be much smaller than its uh, atom if you look at the negative ones, the say for example oxygen, you can see that again the gray is the atom, the atomic radius, and the blue is the ionic radius. So the blue is the oxygen with a two minus charge, meaning that it has gained two electrons. So if you think about what happens with oxygen, oxygen has you're uh, adding electrons and you're adding them in the same shell or energy level, but think about what two negative electrons do to each other. Things that have like charges tend to repel. So if you add more electrons, there are going to be more repulsions and they cause that radius to expand because those electrons are trying to get away from each other, so they're repelling from each other. And so a negative ion is always going to be larger than its atom. So that's the first relationship we have to think about the relationship between the atom and its ion. The other one that we need to talk about is the ionic versus atomic. So when we compare the ionic radius versus the atomic radius, the number of protons is the same. It's an ion or an atom of the same element. And so for negative ions, the electrons are added to that same outer shell, but it increases those electron-electron repulsions. So anions are always going to be larger than their atoms because those electrons are spreading out more. If you look at positive ions or cations, electrons are removed and the, so they lose a whole shell. And when that happens, remember that the number of shells, that, that row number as you go down the periodic table, it describes how far those outer electrons are from the nucleus. And so the cations are actually smaller because you've actually lost a shell of electrons, a shell or an energy level. Let's look at ionic radius again. See if you can spot any isoelectronic series, so series of atoms and ions that have the same number of electrons. Pause the video if you need to. Okay, so let's pick out a couple here. I'm going to start with red. We're going to mark them with different colors so you can see them. So the first one, if you look at Li plus, Be2 plus, and B3 plus, 
those all have the same number of electrons. Lithium has two because it has lost one, beryllium has two because it has lost two, and boron has two because it has lost three. So that's one isoelectronic series. If you haven't kind of figured this out, pause and try again. See if you can find another one. All right. Let's look at another one. Now here's where it gets tricky because instead of kind of being in rows and columns, you can see that oxygen with two fewer, I'm sorry, two more electrons, so it would have 10, and then fluorine with one more electron also has 10. But then sodium, if it loses electron, normally it has 11, it has 10, and so on with magnesium 2 plus and aluminum 2 plus. So all these ones that I'm outlining in green, those are also an isoelectronic series. If you haven't spotted one, pause and try again. Okay, let's see another one. Hopefully you're kind of seeing this trend here. So sulfur with the two minus, chlorine with a one minus, those both have uh, the same number of electrons. 18, and then potassium with a 1 plus, calcium with a 2 plus, gallium with a 3 plus, also the same number of electrons. And then if you scoot down a little bit here, I'm going to move this down, you can see that there is another one here, selenium 2 minus, Br minus, and then these three down here on the left, Rb+, plus, Sr2+, plus, and In3+. Plus. And then this last little one, Te2- minus and I-. Minus. And obviously there are other isoelectronic series in the periodic table, but these were just some to show you as an example. So what you want to think about is what, what's going to happen to ions and atoms that have the same number of protons but smaller numbers of electrons. So let's look at what happens with that. If you think about it, if you've got the same number of protons, I'm sorry, so what we want to do is look at what happens when you have the same number of electrons but different numbers of protons. So if we look at one particular isoelectronic series, let's look at oxygen, the one that starts with oxygen. So O2 minus, F minus, and then these three over here, Na plus, Mg2 plus, Al3 plus. So we know that these all have 10 electrons, so oxygen normally has 8, it's gained 2, fluorine normally has 9, it's gained 1, sodium normally has 11, it's lost 1, and so on. So you think about what's happening to the number of protons here. The number of electrons is the same, but here you have 8 protons, here you have 9, with sodium you have 11, with magnesium you have 12, and with aluminum you have 13. So think about what we know about the attractions between positive and negative things. The more the, the different charges are always attracted, but the more protons are going to cause an increased charge, and so what's going to happen is the size of those ions are going to get smaller because you are adding more protons, increasing the attractions with the same number of electrons, so those repulsions in that outside are not increasing, you're going to make that atom get smaller. So as you go within an isoelectronic series, as you increase the number of protons, the ion will get smaller. If you go in the other direction in an isoelectronic series, so the number of protons decreases, then those uh, ions will get larger. So let's kind of sum that up with a, another slide here, a few notes for you. 
So within an isoelectronic series, always the same number of electrons, we have to think about the number of protons changing. So as the number of protons increases, electrons are pulled in tighter, and those negative ions are going to be larger than the positive ions with the same number of electrons. Try this challenge problem. If you get it right, I'll have a treat for you when you come to class, and we'll go through it together to try to make sure that everybody understands it. See you in class.